This is John Jackson Miller, and you're listening to the Star Wars Canon Podcast. May the Force be with you. There are stories about what happened. It's true. Hey everybody, welcome to episode 43 of the Star Wars Canon Podcast. I am your host, Brian Miller, and I'm so glad you've decided to join us to talk about our favorite thing in the world, yet again, Star Wars. Joining me this weekend, uh, I've got the one and only, you guys know him and love him, Mr. Richard J. How is it going, brother? Welcome to 2021. That was a perfect intro. Thank you, thank you one and all. I hope your Christmases have been great, and looking forward to a prosperous new year. Yeah, hopefully it's better than what we got last year. Um, so far, so good, right? I think, uh, depending, uh, I guess, on who you are. Um, we've got some mailbag questions lined up for you guys. We've got some new games to talk about, some books to talk about. <laughs> well, I think the, the first thing that I'd like to talk about is the announcement of Alan Tudyk confirming that he will not actually appear in Season 1 of Andor. I'm kind of bummed. Yeah, in fact, I've got a quote yeah. right here. This is from... Alan himself. They're shooting right now. I'm not in it. But if it stays on the air, stories keep getting told. I'll end up in there. I'm going to end up in the show. It's just the stories Tony Gilroy is telling doesn't involve K2SO until later on. I can't be too specific, but I can definitely say that I'm not going to be in the first season. So there's a couple of things to take away from that. At least you know, from my perspective, number one, um, the fact that he's referenced that he's not going to be in the first season, it's kind of confirmation that there's going to be a second season. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm glad that they're taking their time with the story. They're not throwing all the eggs in one basket from episode one. They're going to build up the story, um, hopefully over the course of multiple series. And I think it shows competence in the quality of the storytelling that they're not going to bring in. One of the major characters, I mean, this is Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. This is a duo. This is a duo. This is a double team. And the fact that they're only bringing in one right now, um, you know, which, yeah, I'm kind of bummed about. I mean, K2SO is a big draw for me personally, and I'm sure the same for many other people. Right. But it also as well shows confidence in the quality of the story that they've got to work with, that they're comfortable in saying, do you know what? We'll keep him till later. So, uh, guys, what are your thoughts? Drop your comments in the section below. Brian, what are your thoughts on uh, K2SO not appearing in the first season of uh, Ando? I'm I'm kind of surprised, to be honest. Like you said, uh, K2 and, and Cassian go really well together. And Cassian is a big, or, uh, K2 is a big selling point for, for an Andor show, especially one that a lot of people are already like, well, do I want to watch this or do I not want to watch this? Um, but we did get that one shot comic a while back that Cassian and K2SO and it's how those two met. And it was, it was the reprogramming of K2. It was how he went from being a security droid to being Cassian's, uh, kind of sidekick. And I always thought it was kind of funny in that comic, how it was so easy, how it was basically just a flip of a switch. And, and he was, you know, all of a sudden reprogrammed to the new personality and K and, you know, Cassian's best friend. I always thought that maybe you know, uh, K2 wouldn't show up in the first season until the very, very end. Like the season finale is, you know, him reprogramming K2 and, 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 and we get a better version of it than what we got in the comic. But if he's not in season one, that means he is going to be in season two at some point, which means we're probably going to end up seeing a live action version of that comic or they're going to retcon the comic one or the other. Hmm. Well, that's it. I mean, Alan is not going to be in the show. Right. Uh, it, uh, season one. It doesn't necessarily mean to say that K2SO is not going to be there. If K2SO is going to be there, it's going to be under his previous programming. Mm. So they're not they're not casting Alan. So it could very well be that we'll see the droid in its original factory setting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just either chasing after them or just 
towards the end, as you said, towards the end of the series, it could be that he's in the background somewhere, and uh, maybe tries to to capture uh, and apprehend the, mm. the rebels, and could very well they'll just knock him out, stun him, and try to reprogram. But uh, yeah, like you said, with the flip of a switch, you know, it seems to be the you know uh, reprogramming Rex, flick of a switch in yeah. the circuit. In the brain. You know, the same for for R two D two reprogramming three uh, PO at the end of Rise of Skywalker and flick the switch, boom, and and three uh, PO's back. Right. Um, so I, I, they, yeah, it could very well be that they'll just be a flick of the switch. But I'd like to think it's more dramatic than just turning the switch on and off. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess we'll see. I mean, I mean, in regards to his personality, it could very well be that K two S O is somebody, or there's a droid that may very well get apprehended midway through the season, Mm -hmm. programming is switched, and the personality hasn't been discovered yet within K2, and uh, K2 has uh, discovered his personality, and towards the end of the series will then resemble, okay, K2 resemble, you know, from the movie Rogue One, but... uh, Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I, I think it's a very fair part. I think it's a fair assumption that uh, towards the end of the season, the droid itself will appear. Will pop up. Not necessarily the make of uh, the the model of the droid. I think there will mm-hmm. be plenty of Imperial droids uh, throughout the show. But I think specifically the K two S O model from the movie may very well appear towards the end of the series. Just not a repurposed, reprogrammed K two. It'll be a factory set in Imperial droid through and through. Mm-hmm. Or you know, I'm I'm sitting here having this this uh, I guess fantasy about what it could look like. Maybe maybe something comes along where they're trying to break into a, an imperial facility or something, and they capture one of the the droids. You know, K2's the actual body of K2, and they're in the middle of of trying to reprogram him, and they're not even entirely sure it's going to work. And maybe when he wakes up, he won't be reprogrammed, and it'll just kill them or or something. And, and you know, maybe it'll because I mean that's not how it happened in the comic, obviously, but. It 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 wouldn't surprise me at all if they end up retconning the comic and doing it in a different way. I mean, they retconned a lot of the Ahsoka novel. I shouldn't say a lot of it, but they retconned some of the Ahsoka novel for the end of Clone Wars. But seeing you know them kind of curious as to whether it's going to work or not, and it zoom in on K 2s face, and then you just see his eyes kick on, and then boom, end of season. Mm, you know, yes. you know what I'm saying. So, I I, I see K two since he's not going to be in season one being a cliffhanger. Yeah. Could very well be. I mean, if there is a cliffhanger to leave that show on, then that cliffhanger, I believe, is going to be K2 because that's one half of the show. Oh, yeah. That, that you know, like the Baz wanted to see. Okay, we got K2, we got Cassian Ando. Great, we're going to get a Cassian and a K2 show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the show. And I, I, uh, I hope it's not a too far in the future that we get to see K2 return. Um, right. Some of the best dialogue, I think, in all of the Star Wars movies comes from K2. Oh, yeah. When, yeah. When he belts Cassian on, on the face and says, there's a fresh one of your mouth off again. <laughs> Where are you taking these prisoners? These, prisoners. <laughs> the, these are yeah. prisoners. Are yeah. <laughs> I'm taking these prisoners to be imprisoned in prison. <laughs> I, You know, and, and we, we've talked about humor in Star Wars a lot, how a lot of it doesn't work. The poop jokes don't work. The, the you know, all the the fart jokes, none of that stuff works. But a lot of the humor, you know, especially the stuff K2 put forward in Rogue One worked. And that's good Star Wars humor. Um, you know, talk, Jen talking to him, talking about how, you know, I'm afraid that they might shoot at you and, and, and miss and hit me. And he's like, well, that wouldn't be so bad, you know. <laughs> and and, and just, it, yeah. you, did well, you know that that wasn't me? You know, <laughs> like stuff like that. Course, it works it, so yeah, well. Or, or even when they sat in the cockpit of the... Uh... Of the U wing, and he explains that uh, everyone's going to die. It's all of quiet, yeah. not me. I can survive in space. That's good really, humor. Really, you know, rub salt in people's wounds. That's oh, good humor. Says, um, I have a bad feeling. Shut up, Kay. <laughs> quiet. I love it. That that that's good Star Wars humor. So, I think once once they bring K two into this series, it'll really. I think I like you said. It shows confidence in. Just the character of Cassian, that he can carry a show on his own without K2 also. Um, mm. You know, and then when you finally get that treat of getting K2 brought in, because look at what we've got in the other shows now. We've we've seen Luke Skywalker take down Dark Troopers. You know they're bringing K2 into this show at some point. 
and, oh, yeah. and and absolutely you can't not you know so it's I, I think it's gonna be a cool build up I think it's gonna be just fine this is one of the shows that I'm really excited for and I know a lot of people aren't you know kind of on the edge of their seat waiting for this one this is one of those that a lot of people could take it or leave it and this is one I am over the moon excited for so I can't yeah. wait to yeah. see what happens with with uh, Andor and, and and bringing K2 into it um because like you said, they're shooting it now. They're shooting the first season right now. And Alan Tudyk's already, you know, like you said, he's not in season one. So <laughs> it's 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 coming. So I'm I'm not in the least That's worried it, about yeah. it at all. Yeah. Yeah, he's not gonna be in there, but it, that doesn't necessarily mean to say the the droid uh, itself right. is not gonna be there. As you said, it could very well end, as you just mentioned on a cliffhanger where he's getting reprogrammed and right at the end of the reprogramming, the eyes, you know, maybe flicker. Right. And we then know right now is K2. But that's it. It ends, you know, mm-hmm. much like The Force Awakens. It ends with Luke Skywalker saying nothing at all. And then you have to wait. You have to wait until the next series yep. for him to, to see how it went down. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's going to boost. It's going to boost the sales of that one shot comic. You know, it's well, going yeah, to. It, I mean, yeah. it's not, maybe not boosted a lot, but it's going to there's going to be people going back and going, where can I get that one shot comic from? You know, so. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, I'm, the, I'm excited the, for it. The trouble with a lot of one-shot comics is that they seem to fly under the radar um, because there's no build-up excitement or word of mouth. The comic will come out and we'll just go under the radar and the next one will come across where you get a series of comics. Right. You get that, oh, okay, what's happening next month when the next comic comes out? And then you get to talk about it, you get the whole word of mouth and that anticipation for the next one. Sometimes a singular comic just kind of falls under the radar and sometimes it just goes completely unnoticed. Right. Yeah. I mean the, the Beckett comic kind of went unnoticed. Uh, the Cassian and K2 kind of went unnoticed. Um, anything that really crossed over Star Wars kind of got its, it's, you know, the, the screaming Citadel and the, the storm of crate and stuff like that. I mean, those kind of got their shining moments, but uh, yeah, they're, they're not stupid enough to leave K2 out of that show. So I, I am totally, totally, convinced that we're we're it's going to be an awesome reveal too it's going to be absolutely an awesome reveal so uh mm. anyway yeah there's that um i wanted to talk about a little uh, i want to talk a little bit about this ubisoft game uh so there's there's a lot to unpack with this story actually and, and now that i'm thinking about it so ea has lost i shouldn't say they lost yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say it ea has lost their exclusive rights to star wars games at this point and Lucasfilm Games has basically opened this up to whoever and their mother wants to make a Star Wars game. And uh, we are finally, I mean, we're, we're getting an Ubisoft Star Wars open world game. Mm. Um, when I first heard this news, I got, I mean, I got super excited because anybody who knows me knows I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. I loved the first Watch Dogs. Um, I've played with the second one a little bit. I haven't played the third one a lot, but I love the first Watch Dogs. Um, and, I, and I love uh, uh, the first Division. The second one was, eh, it was all right. But I am over the moon with with Ubisoft. And I've said for a long time I wanted to see Ubisoft do a Star Wars game. And now we're finally getting it, a an open world Star Wars game from Ubisoft. Man, um I'm like I said. I'm excited for this. You you've played. What were you? You said you've played Ghost Recon. Um, yeah. Um, the studio, the Ubisoft studio, right. uh, Massive Entertainment. Mm-hmm. It's a Swedish studio which worked on the Division series. Now, the information that I've been able to receive, uh, to, the information that I've been able to um, ascertain from this, which I must say, everybody, take it with a grain of salt because this bit has not yet been confirmed. But what I have been able to establish from some other sources is that it's going to be a an MMO. It's going to be an online massive mul- uh, uh, multiplayer, and it's going to play very similar to Ghost Recon and Division, uh, using the uh, Snowdrop engine and other cutting edge technologies from Ubisoft. Now, although I'm not a big fan of Division because of the, the gear system, uh, right. I'm a very big, big fan of the, the Ghost Recon series, specifically Wildlands and uh, Breakpoint. 
Breakpoint at launch did have the gear system, uh, which did kind of hinder my enjoyment. But uh, there was a large update for the one year anniversary, and I kind of went back to the game after listening to the announcements uh, of the update, where they've removed the gear system, and it, it, it's it's great. I mean, it's a very it's all tactical based shooter. There are certain combat patrols that you can utilize to make the best out of the situation that you're in. Um, you know, the maps are big enough that you can have uh, uh, water, land, and air based. Uh, vehicles, so you could really, you know, employ those as well into the game. You, if it's set in the the the, uh, the modern or the current era of Star Wars, you've got the X-wings that you can fly around in. And if it's set in the High Republic era, then you've got the the, the vector ships, the new vector ships that you can fly around in. So it's uh, something that I'm going to be really looking forward to because, as I said, I. I've sunk hundreds of hours into these Ghost Recon titles, and again, take it with a grain of salt because nothing has been officially confirmed. But if this game does follow that formula, which this studio has been utilising for the Tom Clancy games, then I'm, I'm going to be a very, very happy little boy with this. Yeah, same. Like, like I said earlier, I, I, I played the crap out of the first Division game, um, and then I, I. I Played some of the second one, and out of, for some reason, the second one seemed a little more off, which is weird because I think the general consensus between the Division games was that they improved a lot of stuff from the first one in the second one, and I was kind of of the opposite mindset. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm just one person. It doesn't mean that I'm not looking forward to this game or, or anything like that. I'm over the moon. Um, but when I first heard the news, I was really excited because when you think Ubisoft, the first thing that pops in for me anyway is Assassin's Creed, mm. and and I'm a huge Assassin's Creed guy. So I was like, oh my god, we're finally getting like an open world Star Wars game along the lines of like what an Assassin's Creed looks like and stuff. And then uh, I started digging deeper and saw that it was the the team that did Division and the Tom Clancy stuff. And 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 it did temper my expectations a little bit, but it's I'm still like I said, I'm still excited for it. Um, and, and did they did they have a like a, a projected release date or anything? I don't, I think it's way too early for anything like that, isn't it? Yeah, it's 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 way too early for anything like this. I mean, the only information that I've got here is that that it is going to be the start of a hopefully long and healthy relationship between the two departments, Ubisoft and uh, Lucasfilm. So hopefully, we could see many more of these types of games come out for Star Wars under the Ubisoft banner. Yeah. But in terms of a release date, there's, there's nothing yet. Uh, but, you know, EA are going to have their, they usually have their annual sort of EA Play conference. So hopefully later this year, we'll find out any new EA titles in the works. We know we've got uh, the, the, the talks of Fallen Order 2. There are as well other EA titles in the mix. Uh, whether or not that's Battlefront 3 or something mm -hmm. completely different. But hopefully, you know, during the middle of the year, when we get to that EA Play, EA, uh, E3 sort of period, hopefully we'll get more information what EA is going to be doing because they they haven't lost the rights to do the games. They're right. No they longer they lost the exclusivity, yeah. So it's still going to, you know, you're still going to have games drop in with EA. So if you do like the current Battlefront series, and you really enjoy how they get played, you could find yourself with another Battlefront game. Mm -hmm. And of course, for me, I'm about the squadrons. I'm yes. about the squadrons. So um, hopefully it means that we'll get more content for squadrons, whether or not it's another game or just content for the existing game. See, this is this is good too because I, you know, I I saw people celebrating online that EA is not the only one doing games anymore. And, and and I saw some people that were a little salty about it. I mean, not nearly as many people were salty about it, but there were people on there that were a little worried thinking that it was going to get convoluted with games now. This is a good thing. This means there's going to be competition across uh, all these companies now to come up with the best games. So it's mm. going to up the ante and it's going to force studios like EA to really step up to the plate. Because like, like you said, they've come out with Squadrons now, which was, as far as I'm concerned, a, a home run. They've they've come out with Jedi Fallen Order, which was a home run. And, you know, Battlefront 2, now it's a home run. Battlefront yeah. 2, when it first started in the first Battlefront, it was a little rocky, you yeah. know, and, and I can get where people were upset with the Battlefront 2 with the, the microtransactions. I totally get it. 
But I think EA was finally starting to pull their heads out of their asses and started, you know, started to really make something that that people wanted. I mean, look at Squadrons. You had the VR support, which is a huge selling point for that game. It had a forty dollar price tag on it. You know, a reduced price tag. That's a huge selling point for a game. You know, just, zero microtransactions. Like, well. yeah, and, and, and the campaign for it was it's the way forward. Yeah, and, I, and the campaign for it was so good. And it was long, you know. I mean, the campaign was actually long for a forty dollars game. So it was. Yeah, it was longer than what I. Th I knew it was going to be a limited campaign because it was, that was confirmed uh, in the video announcement. But it, it was yeah. longer than what I had expected it to be. When they said mini campaign, I went in thinking, okay, we got two hours. And yeah. you, you probably could complete it in two hours, but when you know when you're playing the game for the first time, you're talking to all the crew members, you're talking to all your squad mates. And then you're watching all the briefings, you're trying to do all the missions and not blast your way through. You want to try and take your time, you want to look around, admire yeah. the work that's been put in. You know, I, I probably spent about six, seven hours completing it in total. Um, Especially when you're playing it in VR. Because, oh, yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, that adds an entire new element to that game that is... Because I mean, I've played I've played it both ways. I've played it just on the screen and, and then I did it in VR. There's no competition between those two. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No competition at all. That game was meant to be played in VR. Yeah, you know? I play it predominantly on the Xbox, but I, I also have a copy on PlayStation. Yeah. So I have played it in VR, and yeah, it's it's just insane. I mean, I played multiplayer once or twice in VR, which is a hell of an experience. Mm -hmm. um, but it's nice to just sit there in VR um, yeah. at the very beginning. I remember when I bought the game, uh, when I downloaded the game on the PlayStation, my partner and our kid, came home from ballet, saw me, hooked up to the VR, and I was just, I just created the two characters, all right, so this is the very start of the game, mm -hmm. and my, my daughter comes in, oh, daddy, where have you go, where have you go, and my partner, Francis, she comes in, she goes, oh, what's this, what's this, and just before the Imperial hangar bay loads in, I took off the VR goggles, I said, sit down, love, you're going to want to see this, and I put the goggles on her, so when the game actually started in the hangar, she was the first to experience it. Oh, and wow. She, it was mind-blown. Now, I'd already played it by this point on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. So um, I said to Fran, I said, okay, do you want to take the controls and fly this TIE fighter? Oh, no, 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 you, you do that. <laughs> so, okay, right, great. So I took the controls, slammed on that throttle to get that TIE fighter straight out of the Star Destroyer and pulled all the drifts. All the maneuvers, she was green in the face. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's just nice to sit in the VR and just just look around. The simple things, just oh, flying yeah. past the Star Destroyer and trying to find the bridge to see if you can see little people in the window. You know, it's it's an experience. It's all I can say for the yeah. VR. Yeah, it really is. I and, 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 I mean, it, oh god, it's so. A matter of fact. I know what I'm doing tomorrow night because I'm I'm gonna sit and I'm just gonna squadrons the crap out of everything because I haven't got to sit and actually play it in a while. But anyway, we're not just here to talk about squadrons. Another game we wanted to talk about is this Lego Skywalker saga that's getting ready to release. Jay, you said you were looking around. And you said there was a, a leaked like release date window because we still don't have a release date on this game. Yeah, TT Games uh, Studio in Manchester that's working on the game. Um, again, take all this with a pinch of salt because yeah. nothing has come to officially but I was looking online and there was somebody who claims to have a friend that works in the studio who stated that the uh, anticipated release date is going to be between April the 20th and May the 5th this year with the hope that they can get it out on May the 4th mm -hmm. Now, it would be great if it comes out on May the 4th, a nice little touch for Star Wars Day. But again, take it with a grain of salt because nothing as official has come out. You know, if it does come out on May the 4th, we're, we're on the 30th of January right now. So we've got, what, three months? Yeah. Yeah, three or four months. Um, yeah, so three like months that. to like a week, you know. So, you know, we don't have a lot of time. And there's not been much in the way of any marketing to push it. Mm-hmm. So um, you know, I'm I'm unsure, but take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, it could come out. Who knows? I'm I'm excited for this game, dude. Because I mean, for game nights right now, I'm doing the Lego: The Force Awakens, and mm. going back and playing that game again, I've forgotten how fun that game is. Um, yeah, 
and, and it's an absolute blast. And and you know, I think you and I have talked off uh, off air before. Uh, when when that comes out, we're gonna sit down and power through that thing together in co op. Yeah, and Hopefully. I yeah, I Hopefully. I'm it's a cross platform so... for the game. But I mean, if not, I'll just pick it up on the PlayStation. Yeah. But another thing that I was reading as well was that um, with your characters, there's going to have a progression system similar to the Fallen Order, where you know you're not going to start off force pushing enemies over. You're going to progress to unlock those abilities along with the estimated rumored 800 characters that you're going to unlock in the game. How many did so, you say? It's rumored to have 800 characters within the game. Jesus. I see. I Because I'd heard two. I'd heard 200. But I haven't heard eight. I mean, it makes sense having that many. Well, I mean, you're covering nine films. So, I mean, it makes sense. That's it. And if you think about it, like with the early, like with the original uh, Lego games, you had, you had your different, you had your, your run and gun guy, you had your Jedi guy, right. you had your droid, you know, and there was multiple variations for each character. You had, you, know, you had, if you wanted to go for a Jedi, then you had every single Jedi that ever appeared, more or less, in the movies. You know, Kit Fisto was in it, Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Obi Wan, Qui Gon, you mm-hmm. know, Yoda. You had all these different uh, Force users was in it. Then you had the non Force user characters, you know, that usually came with the uh, grappling hook. Then you'd mm-hmm. have the, some of the characters that could jump really, really high, like the Gungans. Right. And then, then the, uh, the you'd have different types of droids. Then you'd have the protocol droids, the astromech droids, you know, various iterations of each droid as well. So, um, you know, it's it's po- it's possible that there is uh, 800 characters. I think that is a bit of a stretch. I, I, wouldn't, yeah. uh, I, wouldn't bet any, I wouldn't bet any money on there being 800 characters. Um, I think it's going to be more reasonable to assume that there's going to be with all the content in the game itself and the fact that you have dialogue in this game with the option to turn the dialogue off so I'm not sure how the cutscenes the cutscenes are obviously going to be different because there's not going to be animated mouths mm-hmm. I think a lot of time is going to be spent you know getting that uh, uh, done tested and I don't think there's going to be a lot of space left for 800 characters. I think you're probably looking at about, well, realistically, I'd say about 150 to 200. Well, I'm looking, the- I'm looking at Screen Rant right now. And Screen Rant has got a story on it. It says, uh, the Lego Sky- uh, Star Wars Skywalker Saga is coming out in spring of 2021. And fans can expect to see 500 characters. Who's been? Here's who has been confirmed so far. And they've got a list of... Uh, 121 characters that have been confirmed that you can play as. That I mean, still, that's insane. Yeah, when you think about you know the work that you, just the fact that they've got dialogue in this game. Yeah, and the actors, script writers, then they're going to do all the cutscenes, and they've I've read as well. I'm pretty sure this was actually confirmed, uh, but quite some time ago. But there's an option to turn the dialogue off completely. Which means oh. every single cutscene has to be reworked, all right, to to not show the the you know, the mouth animations right, on moving. the moving, um, and to give it then that sort of old school Lego game humor with just oh huh, huh you know huh? right with, um, like like when Vader's telling Luke is he's he's his father and he's just holding the picture the photo out and he's just pointing yeah. at the picture yeah. uh, uh, and pointing at you know at Luke yeah exactly yeah. So I mean, hopefully, again, you know, we'll we have to play it both ways. Console generation now. Maybe they are going to have five hundred plus characters in there. Uh, my only hope is that it is cross-platform. So yeah. I think that's the way forward with video games. I, I think so, and, and I think most of the games that are coming out now are cross are cross-platform. If I'm not mistaken, um, I think that's. I think we're finally in the future, guys. I think we finally made it to where we, it, you know, it doesn't matter what you play on. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm over the moon excited for this game. I cannot wait. Uh, and honestly, the more characters, the better. What's the only <laughs> the crazy thing is about this is when you like if you look at let's say Lego Force Awakens as an example, you I, I don't know how many characters. Uh, I think it was what close to eighty characters. Uh, actually, I think it was more than uh, that. I think it was a hundred. I, I, I think it was a hundred some. Maybe. Um. But you've got a you've got a a, a a certain list of abilities 
right? That you need to stretch out across all these characters. And it's like something like nine or 10 different abilities. And it doesn't matter. I, I, I mean, you got 10 or 11 characters that have the exact same character, the exact same abilities. So it's not going to really matter which one you have. You know what I'm saying? It's just, it's basically having 500 characters is basically just a stunt to be able to say, we've got 500 playable characters, you know? And, and I, it, it's going to be insane going through that game beginning to end. Mm. It's going to be absolutely awesome. It's going to be a fun journey to go through it too. all in because I don't I, I don't know if maybe you've noticed this when when they redo levels for movies and Lego games, uh, you know, like uh, Indiana Jones is a good example. They did an Indiana Jones Lego game where it was three, yeah. the first three, and then they completely redid it with two and did all four and they redid the first three completely. Um, I see them doing that with Force Awakens as well. Like, so when you get to Force Awakens into this game, I don't see it being exactly verbatim what the Lego Force Awakens game is. You know what I mean? The level building and and, and, and the level layout. I think it's going to be completely different. New cut scenes completely across the board. Um, and, and, and it goes for the classic trilogy too because I mean, and the prequels because we've seen them in their own Lego games. You know what I'm saying? So to sit down and actually go through it and see all these new cut scenes and these new level layouts, I think it's going to be a blast. To sit down and, and I think it's going to be just simply fun. Mm. You yeah. know, I hope so. Um, I, I've not played the Lego Indiana Jones game. I do have a copy of it, uh, but I never really got around to playing it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, it, this all the Lego phenomenon with games started with Star Wars. Oh yeah. You know, uh, all the way back, what, 15, 16 years? No, it probably wasn't that long ago. Probably about 12, 12, 13 years ago, maybe. And, you know, it, it spawned multiple game franchises. It I think spawned it goes movies, back further than that, even. You know, TV shows. I, yeah, it could very well be. I, I mean, it was before 2010. Um, I mean, maybe like 2007, 2008, maybe. But, you know, it, the Lego movies have come out. All these other Lego games have come out. It's all spawned off the back of the success of the Star Wars Lego series. So yeah. it's nice to see that this game's going to come out and go full circle and incorporate a bit of everything, you know, from mm -hmm. the, the Star Wars uh, the Lego series. Lego Star Wars the video game. The very first one, March 29th, 2005. 2005? Yep. Wow. Cause, and wow. that was the first Lego game, Over too. 16 years. Yeah, that was the first actual Lego game, too, that they released. Because, I mean... It, I thought it was going to be right before, because that's right before, is it? Yeah, that's right before episode three came out. Yeah, it was, it was May 2005. Yeah, episode so, and, and the first one was the prequels, if I'm not mistaken, and then they did the classic trilogy, Lego Star Wars 2, the original trilogy, and then they ended up doing the complete saga, which isn't so complete anymore. Um, but yeah, I, I absolutely love it, and I'm looking forward to that one too. I, I can't wait, man. Things are, things are, this is, it all circles back. I know we kind of got off the tangent about the Ubisoft game, but it kind of goes back to what we were saying about how there's going to be competition now and, and how everybody's going to be forced to really step up their game and really make something incredible. And, yeah. and, 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 you, and there's, these studios are going to have bragging rights now, you know, I mean, all oh, our games sold more than yours did, you know, stuff. And it's going to make everybody really want to put everything they've got. Cause when you've got EA just having exclusive rights to it, they don't have anything to lose. You know what I mean? There's no stakes. The stakes aren't there, you know, and 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 the the competition's not there. So, it's a good thing. I'm I'm excited about this and and I I can't wait to see where it goes at all, man. Cannot wait. Um yeah. so let's talk about this High Republic thing as well. So, the High Republic is officially launched. And with it, there's come this YouTube channel of everything that's that's High Republic, and, and they're talking about new characters, and, and, and doesn't the High Republic have its own Star Wars show now? Yeah, so in a sense, it's just yeah. the Star Wars YouTube channel, which, as many of us have probably already watched or have watched in the past, the Star Wars show, which used to run uh, every week, there's now a High Republic Star Wars show hosted by Christina Ariel, mm -hmm. and debuted Wednesday on the 27th. It's just a weekly rundown on all things High Republic with some behind the scenes look. There can be some spoilers given, but before any spoilers are given, you are presented with a warning. Um, so, you know, it's it's safe. It's safe to go in there. You right. are given warnings when there's spoiler material if you don't wish to watch any further. 
Okay. I see. I haven't gotten on the on the channel at all yet because I'm I'm uh, I know you haven't finished Light of the Jedi yet. I'm still working on it, um, and I haven't even started a Test of Courage yet. Um, so, yeah, my copy of a Test of Courage hasn't yeah. arrived yet. Um, I was talking to some of the guys on the Discord server. Shout out to Steph um, about the Light of the Jedi. Um, maybe it's. The current situation I find myself in, you know, thankfully I'm lucky enough to work from home. You know, I know that this virus has cost some people their jobs. I'm perfectly fine sitting here. However, I do a lot of my reading on the travel to and from work. Now that I'm not going anywhere, I'm struggling with the novel. I'm 14 chapters in. I've tried the audio book. I've got quite far with that. But it went in one year and out the other. I paid no attention to it. So um, I'm going to have to address my reading situation and maybe see about changing some things around the house just so I can concentrate and focus on getting this novel uh, under my belt. Mm -hmm. I mean, so far I've read the first, what, one third of the book and I enjoy what I read. Um, I just, I'm struggling to get through it. I'm, I'm about where you are actually. Um, I, I think I'm actually right where you're at, to be honest. Uh, and it, it's, I, I don't want to say I'm having a hard time getting into it because, uh, I mean, I, I kind of am, but I'm not. Um, the first few chapters are just like gold, absolutely amazing and, and, and great. Um, but it's, it's a combination for me between my day job and having the little one running around. And, uh, you know, working on the website and, and doing all this as well, uh, it, it, it's it, it, it's hard to keep up on a lot of it. And then when it's a book that it's you're it's slowly losing your interest, it's it's hard to come back to it, you know. Um, yeah, but I'm I'm about where you are. I'm about a third of the way through it. It's not bad. It's not a bad book by any means. It's 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 definitely not, you know, it, 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 I don't want to say at this point, I don't want to say it's top five. It's not it's not top five for me. Um, but it's definitely not like way down with like Heir to the Jedi and, and, and you know, Last Shot. It's definitely not that far down for me. Um, yeah, I mean, I've enjoyed what I've read. I'm, really, I'm, I'm not blaming the book. This is me now. This is my concentration just lapsing completely <laughs> because of the situation that I find myself in homeschooling my little one. So mm -hmm. every, every 30 minutes she's on a break. She comes in, shows me what she's done on Animal Crossing. You know, and then she just wants to, to, you know, she wants to coach, she wants to sit with me. Yeah. And it's, um, even at night, I've tried, okay, at night, everyone's gone to bed. I'll pick up the book. I'll put YouTube on. I'll put a little bit of Star Wars music on. And I'll think, right, this video is an hour long. This so uh, right, okay, I'll read an hour with this video and then see where I go from there. But, yeah, I'm struggling to, to concentrate yeah. on it. So I think I'm going to need to have a, good think about the reading situation, change some things up here in my personal life to see if I can get this novel underway. Because I don't dislike the novel. I've liked what I've read so far. Yeah. You know, it's setting up the stage for what's to come with the High Republic era. Mm -hmm. I'm digging Ava, Chris. I'm really liking what she's been doing so far in the book. Um, you know, I, I know those who have read it will, will know exactly what I'm referring to. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it, you know, where these Jedi progress from the novel uh, and how, you know, how it kind of plays in then to moving forward. Is As I said to, to you before, it, um, all of these characters, none of them are safe. It's not like with right. a leg character that you have to treat in a certain way and make sure that they're given the, the right tools to work with because there's an expectation on them. Nah, these characters, they, you know, you could bond with them in one novel, they could drop dead the next novel. Mm -hmm. um, so no one's safe in this. So there's always going to be that... That tension. Oh, that, that's it. There's, you know, this, the, it could, you know, is, to, is the book, is today's book the book with its boons and bows out of the saga completely. Right. Um, it's, it's, so it, I really want to get into it. I need, to, I need to change some things, I think, around the house and really <laughs> make that effort to concentrate more get this story under my belt. Well, um, the, the high Republic YouTube channel though, we, I know you said you wanted to bring this up and, and I agree. This is something that I think needs to be addressed. Um, I didn't know anything about this until right before we recorded and, and you kind of enlightened me about what was going on. Um, 
with with I don't want to say the backlash, but I guess that's what it is with the backlash and with the uh, the toxicity and fans that's starting to rear its ugly head again surrounding the YouTube channel. Do you kind of want to go over that? Yeah. Um, so with Christina, as soon as she was announced to be the host of the show, I went over to social media, to Twitter, to follow her, to sort of uh, see, you know, keep in kind of contact with the show and you know, with the schedule and any announcements that they're going to make. Within days of the announcement, she started putting up tweets, uh, either messages that she's received on Instagram, all different social media accounts, and uh, vile. Uh, I, I mean, I can't repeat what's on there because you know it's, it's the racism is off the chart, off the chart, you know, and it's not subtle; it's blatant. You know, there's there's dropping all sorts of words, images. Of certain animals from the animal kingdom mm. uh, is absolutely vile. It's embarrassing. As a 35-year-old Star Wars fan, this is absolutely embarrassing, and it's coming from the same group of people that it always comes from. I'm not going to say what group of people because they know who they are, and we all know who they are. You know, it's just vile to look at, and it's all the same. It's all the same people hiding under fake. Profile, fake named profiles, right. you know, and they're just following the same old people to troll them, and just really just try and ruin their day. And it, and she screen captured everything, receipts, slapped them all over social media, and it is utterly vile to me. The, sh- the things that she's been said is horrific. So guys, it, please, if you don't like something, that's fine. Go over to the channel if you have something constructive that you wish to voice. By all means, social media, voice it. Go over to the YouTube channel, voice your constructive criticism. If you like something, show your support. If you didn't like it and you've got nothing nice to say, just keep your opinions to yourself and move on. Yeah. It's not worth losing your mind over. I, you know, I, like you said, it's embarrassing, you know, because there's people outside the fandom looking at, the, looking at this going, you know, it's just all Star Wars fans, and it's not. You know, uh, it's 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 a small sect of fans, and as it's what we always try to say on this channel, it's just a small group that's just really loud, and it's it, it it's disheartening to see stuff like this. You know, I mean, we this is twenty twenty one people. Why are we still having an issue with this? You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 simply like you said, embarrassing. You know, and, yeah. and there's no reason for it. It's completely uncalled for. And I mean, from what you're saying, this was happening before they even launched the the channel, before they even launched the show. Yeah. It, yeah. Why? It's... Okay. So early last year, 2020, when COVID started spreading big across the West, mm-hmm. there was an Asian American who got coughed on. Um, by a, uh, I can't recall if it was a male or a female, mm-hmm. but they got coughed on, and uh, some slurs were made to the, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the American, and uh, that that person took to social media and said, "Oh look, this has just happened to me today," and she called. She said, "Hey, white people, sort it out." Pretty much those words, and I'm in agreement with her. Oh, mm-hmm. white people, sort your rubbish out. We do the same, or we're the first, you know, we'll cuss, uh, we'll cuss other people out, which is fine, but you've got to expect it back and you've got to take it back. Uh, now, I know no, that doesn't apply to everybody, you know, right. not everyone's going to turn up and, and read the news and, you know, see the headlines and automatically think it was this person or that person and take the social media to vent out. But she's not targeting any one individual. She's just saying, look, in this society, this is happening. Have a word, see what you can do to sort it. And as soon as she was announced as the host, bang, they got fight. She fired it all at, right at her. And it's uh, it's um, oh, it's embarrassing. It is. It, it, it truly is. And, and you know, while you were talking about that, I went over and just looked at some of the comments on the YouTube channel, and it's bad. I can't believe that they're actually still there. Um, they're the fans it's, complaining yeah. about the lack of stickers on a laptop. There's no yeah. Star Wars. Stickers on a laptop. Are you for real? I agree. Really, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's junk. It's I, junk. Yeah, and, and all you, you, you want so bad to ignore these people. 
But if you ignore them, then the problem never goes away. You know what I mean? And it's it, it's just, it's completely uncalled for. And, and like I said, it's 2021, people. Do better. You know, I'm not, yeah. I'm not necessarily saying anybody watching this is guilty of this. But if you are one of those people, do better. You know, and, and it's, it's, it, there's nothing more we can do from here, obviously. But it's, it's like, God, man, why? You know, and, and, and you know, it, it goes back to what, what was going on with Last Jedi and, and with Kelly Marie Tran and all this, other, you know, and now Daisy Ridley is getting a lot of crap now. And it's just, you know, me personally, I wasn't a huge fan of the sequel films, you know, as a whole now. Um, but that doesn't mean I want to go on Twitter and just try to ruin somebody's life. Or a director's mm-hmm. life or an actress, you know, what I mean? and, and, and it's not going to fix anything. You know what I'm saying? So do better. Do yeah. better. That's all I can say about that. I just, like, like I said, I didn't know anything about that at all until you brought it up right before we st- started recording. I didn't know anything about this. And it's it's disgusting. So, yeah, we because Jay, he, he asked me if. You know, we wanted to talk about this, and my first thought was no, because at first I said no. I we, we I didn't want to talk about this. I didn't want to bring it to the forefront. But at the same time, at this channel, this is we we try to be one of those YouTube channels where we tolerate everybody's opinions and really try to be that positive beacon in the fandom because it, there's there's not a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we try to be that that positivity that the fandom needs. We really really try to put that at the forefront. And so the more I thought, uh, the, the more I thought about it, the more, I, yeah, no, we need to address this because it's, it's bullshit to be completely honest. So mm. yeah, that's, that's, that's really all I can say is do better. So, uh, I think that basically does it for the news stories, doesn't it? Or am I missing something? There, there is one. There is one. one. What am I missing? Touch earlier, and this surrounds the Obi-Wan series. Now it's nothing major. It's just a funny little story that, uh, uh, came out a, a few days okay. ago, around about, around about the middle of January. Okay. There's um, a small village in Buckinghamshire in England, and there's a quarry, a disused quarry, all right? Right. Uh, in the village. And this disused quarry, okay, has been turned into a massive film set. Now, this film set could stay there for three years, which, if it's going to stay there for three years, hopefully that means they may may be another sequel uh, another series though that's unlikely but it's the, the thing i like about this is that it's really rubbing the villagers up the wrong way getting up every morning and seeing a film crew in a disused quarry you know um, mm-hmm. filming stars unfortunately there's no set for there's no real set photographs because it's still being built but you can find some photographs captured by drone of some of the set pieces where some of the buildings have been uh, erected. Now, I mean, I'm looking at one of them now, and it's 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 blatantly obvious it's Star Wars. I mean, there's no mm-hmm. mistake in it. No, I mean, I'm looking at these buildings now, and they all look like they've come off, you know, the moisture farm. You know, you got all the the typical Tatooine buildings with the round domed tops. There's a lot of them uh, in this picture that I'm looking at now. It's it's blatantly obvious it's a Star Wars film set. Uh, yeah, and it's smack in the middle of a village. <laughs> I think it's, I That's think it's hilarious. Um, don't get me wrong, if you lived in that village and you didn't like Star Wars, it's probably not going to be a great experience. But, um, I mean, I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at this. There's like three or four streets in this set. There's a, a big inter- y, inter- or y junction or an intersection. Mm-hmm. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven houses in a row, seven buildings in a, in a, in a row. And there's three, four, five sets of sets of streets. It's it looks once this thing is fully completed, it's gonna be big. It's gonna be a big set. Um, how much it gets utilized in the show, I have no idea. But I'm looking at some of these buildings and they're all rustic looking, you know, they all look as if they had corrugated sheets of iron or just mm-hmm. rusted down uh, on some of these buildings. Um, so I'd like to see how this story develops, you know, over the next couple of years. Right. You know, if this quarry is going to be there for uh, not this quarry, if this film site is going to be there for three years, is that maybe going to lead itself into potentially another series, depending as to how this one finishes? Right. But I know originally it's supposed to be just a, a limited series, so I mean, for me, that, that was like, okay, well, they're going to do one series, wrap it up, and go home. 
Right. They have a like, like mm-hmm. they had like almost like they had a singular story to tell, mm-hmm. and and that they were going to tell it wrap like you said wrap it up put it in the can, and and call it. But yeah, if it's going to be sitting there for three years, that that kind of raises some questions. Yeah. So you know, it, it's. I mean, I, it's going to stay there for quite some considerable time for possible reshoots. That's you know the logical thing, but potentially sitting there for three years, I'd like to think that. They've got, you know, they've worked their scripts out. They've looked at it. Okay, we could end the show here, but there is material that can be used potentially for a second season. So that's something to keep keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, I'm ready for the Obi Wan series. Out of all of them that are coming, that is the one that you could. If I had a gun to my head and I had to pick one that was actually going to make it through production and, and be completed, it would be the Obi-Wan series out of all of them. Um, I, you know, uh, Kirsty and I were watching Revenge of the Sith uh, last night, not, not, last night or night before. And uh, we were seeing that Anakin Obi-Wan relationship again. And, you know, Kirsty doesn't watch Star Wars as often as I do. Um, but, you know, we started talking about that again and how that's going to carry over into the Obi-Wan series. And, I like I said, it's just building anticipation for me, and I and I can't wait. Uh, when's the Obi Wan series supposed to come out? Is it next year? I think it's next year. Sometime is it yeah. next year? Which means we'll probably get a trailer for it somewhere this year, probably the latter half of the year. But that means we'll probably be getting one here before long. Ah, uh, I can't Fingers wait, man! Crossed. Bring it on, dude. Yeah. Um. So I think that's going to basically do it for news this week. Uh, we do have three mailbag questions lined up that we wanted to address. Uh, and and I think they're good questions. A couple of them are, you know, more more current events and stuff, you know, that's been going on. That's why we didn't talk about it in the news section, because we were going to address it here. But uh, I, you ready to get into this, Jay? Because I'm, I'm, I'm ready yeah. to talk about some of this stuff. Because, uh, yeah, Yeah, let's just jump right into it then. Question number one this week comes from Leslie Green. And Leslie says, Greetings, Canon crew. My name is Leslie. I started following your channel recently and wanted to tell you I'm glad I did. It's very nice to have a channel that does tolerate other opinions and tries to cater to all fans. I appreciate that. I really do. That's that's basically what what we said earlier, what we try to do here. Uh, She goes on to say, I wanted to ask if you guys had seen this theory going around that the sequel trilogy is an alternate universe because of Ahsoka surviving her battle with Darth Vader thanks to Ezra and the World Between Worlds. Do you think there's any credibility to it? I love your show, and I can't wait for your website to launch. Thanks for the question, Leslie. Um, so before before we really get into whether or not we think it's credible or not, in case you guys haven't heard, so here's, what the, here's the basic gist of the theory. Uh, the basic gist is that when Ezra saved Ahsoka in Rebels, in the World Between Worlds episode from Vader. Uh, that caused a ripple. Because remember, at the time that episode came out, we the sequel trilogy was already started. We already had Force Awakens out. Uh, so it was it was already going. The, the theory is that when Ezra pulled her out, that because she survived to tell the Mandalorian to take Grogu to Typhon, or Typho, I remember how you say the, the planet, I think it's Typho, and he reached out to Luke Skywalker that that altered the timeline because we know from the comics Ben Solo was Luke's first apprentice and now he's come and got Grogu. So they're saying basically it started an alternate timeline where the sequel films didn't happen and that this was kind of the catalyst, kind of the fulcrum where it where it split off. Um, Jay, I know how I feel about this. What do you think, man? I think it's silly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, the, not the question, Leslie. No, 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 no. Yeah, definitely the not the question. Yeah, I think the whole theory that there's an alternate reality, uh, I think, is ridiculous. This is not Back to the Future. Okay, this is not, uh, you know, an alternate 1985. Um, no, not at all. I think there's there's no credibility to this theory whatsoever. I I, I kind of see. Look, there's <laughs> somebody really is reaching here to try to make sure the sequel trilogies are not considered canon. That, that That's basically the way I'm looking at it, is that somebody came up with this theory and they really tried to piece it together. And I get where they're coming from. I totally get it. Like it In the comics, it does say Ben Solo was, was uh, Luke's first apprentice. But we 
or was his first student, but we don't know that Grogu was ever a student of Luke. We don't know that that ever officially happened. We just know that Luke left with him and we don't know what happened since then, you know? Um, and, and honestly, I think it's funny that all these people are trying to say that the Luke Skywalker and Mandalorian kind of cancels out uh, the the Luke Skywalker from Last Jedi. I think it's kind of funny. Um and 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 it, it doesn't. It's the same Luke, you know. And and it doesn't cancel out the sequel trilogy. It's still there, which we're gonna address here on another question here in a second. But uh, it's it's still there. So yeah, I think it, I think the entire theory is is silly. I don't think there's anything to it at all. Um, and yeah, I just now now we could be totally dead wrong and come to find out that yeah, this is actually what's happening. You know what I mean? And if it does, I'll be the first to eat my words. But I'm with you, man. This is totally silly. Yeah. So anyway, I hope that answers your question, Leslie. Uh, let us know, guys. What do you think in the comments section? What do you guys think of this idea that there's an alternate timeline that Ahsoka was kind of the catalyst of it? And and do you th do you think there's any merit to it? I mean, do you think we're completely crazy for thinking that there's no merit to it? Do you think it's crazy that anybody does? Let us know in the comments. I, I want to hear what you guys have to say about that. Uh, thanks for the question, Leslie. Do appreciate it. Uh, question number two this week comes from Hector Miller, my brother. No, I'm just kidding. I don't have a brother um, that I know of anyway. Uh, <laughs> looking at you, mom. Uh, and Hector says, hey there, Brian, I have a question for your podcast. Wasn't sure if you were going to address it or not. So I wanted to get your take on the rumors surrounding the new Knights of the Old Republic game that's supposedly uh, being made without Bioware and EA. Uh, I think I don't think it was supposed to say EA because I don't think EA made the original one, did they? I think it was just Bioware. No, it, it, it was Bioware, but yeah, that's Bio, what I thought. now owned by EA. Right, right. Um, I've heard you mention KOTOR on your channel before, and I figured anyone that plays it would be excited about a new one. Keep up the great work. Yeah, so there's this story going around. Uh, is it a rumor at this point, or is it has it been confirmed? Well, there's always stories of KOTOR right. 3. Um, what we do know uh, is um, there's a podcast called B.O.B., or Bob Podcast, and there's a user or a contributor by the name of Bespin Bulletin. Now, Bespin Bulletin has previously leaked information about Squadrons before Squadrons was even announced. Okay. So this person does have a track record of providing information that does turn out to be correct. Okay. Not all the time, but they, they do have a pretty good record. Now, um, he reports that a new installment is in development with a non-EA studio and this was also ref uh, referenced by Bloomberg News video game journalist Jason Schreer who also seemed to confirm this so my bet, my bet is yes this game is in development is it a KOTOR 3? No I don't think it's going to be a KOTOR 3 I think it's going to be an RPG centered around Knights of the High Republic Mm -hmm. But again, take it with a grain of salt because nothing official has been released. But I'm going to put my money on, uh, on this being an actual thing. Rumors have been floating around for a long time. And this person has leaked previous content in the past, which has actually turned up to be correct. So my money is on, yeah, there is a Knights of the High Republic game being made in the style of the old KOTOR game. Not necessarily on the same engine, right. but uh, EG. See, I, I don't know a whole lot about because I had the story pulled up here a while ago. And let me see if I can pull it up again real quick because um, I had it pulled up. So you guys probably hear me typing in the background. Sorry. Um, I want to make sure I get the actual, the facts that everybody does, you know, that I want to get the actual uh, story. Okay, so this is on gamesradar.com. Uh, it says... A new Knights of the Old Republic game could be on the way from studio behind the mobile ports. Uh, it says the developers of the mobile port of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic could be working on a new game in the series that's rumored to be in development. Uh, as noted by Russian site DTF, Aspir Media is currently recruiting uh, for an unannounced AAA RPG having uh, previously developed ports for a number of old Star Wars games, bringing Knights of the Old Republic 2 to iOS and two, and the two Jedi Knight games to Nintendo Switch uh, and PS4 in recent years. That's not much to go on by itself, but the site also notes that a large number of Bioware veterans who have left the company's Austin studio in recent years 
uh, have wound up at Aspire. Aspire, Aspire, is that how you say it? Aspire, Asp- it's probably Aspire. Um, so the fact that they're bringing on veteran developers from the old KOTOR games, uh, I mean, that lends a lot towards it being a KOTOR game. I don't think you're yeah. wrong. I don't think you're wrong at all that it's probably going to be, you know, Knights of the High Republic. I, you're probably spot on with that. I, a matter of fact, I would put money on that with you, that that's what it is. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm excited about this, especially if it's the same people that worked on the old Kotor games. Dude, bring it on, you know. And especially, we need to keep an eye out though, because if they start getting Drew Capri, uh, uh, oh, Coffee. thank you. I couldn't think of how to say his last name for a second. If they start talking about bringing him on. Uh, it you can bet there's some serious shit going down, and that that this is they definitely a, going they to be get a bean cameo. Oh God, yes, absolutely. And and you know what if God, I, you, God, part of me really wants to go. What if it is a like a Darth Bane, Darth Revan story? You know, and I know the two were a thousand years apart in in the EU. I totally get that, but this isn't the EU anymore. You know, um, I just. This this excites me, and it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with you know EA not having the exclusive rights anymore. Anybody that really wants to make a game can probably apply for the licensing and make a badass game now. So yeah, I'm I'm excited about this. I can't wait. Whether or not it's even if it's a reboot, right? And it's like High Republic instead of the Old Republic. Awesome, bring it on. Cannot wait. Especially with it saying AAA title, that's awesome. That's that's huge news. But let's go the other way. Let's say for, you know, argument's sake that it maybe is a KOTOR 3. Um, That's a story I think a lot of people are dying for. And does that, by default, make the first two games canon, in your opinion, Jay? Well, I think with KOTOR itself, you've got the online uh, game, which also features uh, Revan. So I think whatever story that might have been told for KOTOR 3... It's just been incorporated into that game. But let's just say, hypothetically, we do get Knights of the Old Republic 3. Mm-hmm. Then, um, if they're going to call it Knights of the Old Republic 3, then I would assume they would just pull the other two games in as canon. Right. But then we're going to say, okay, well, are you going to pull in the Revan novel as canon? Right. Uh, or you're going to just drop the novel completely. But, I mean, I, I can't see it. Even it's a slippery though slope, yeah. Thousands of years before... You know the High Republic. I mean, I think with um, let's see now. I mean, the High Republic is what two hundred. Two hundred, yeah. You're you're probably yeah. right about the High Republic thing because they are really. That's that's basically Disney's version of. I don't want to say their version of Old Republic, but that's that's kind of their outing in that into that territory, you know. And and I mm. totally see that being. Knights of the High Republic or something along those lines, you know, I'm I'm totally on board with you on that. Yeah, I think. Uh, I mean, if we think, I mean, was it the Bane trilogy? I mean, that was what that was a thousand. That was thousand. yeah, that was a thousand years before the films. Uh, Kotor was what four thousand, three thousand. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, it was, I think it was uh, three or four thousand years. Yeah, um, it was. Um, I think the Old Republic. Uh, I remember with the the Old Republic, I believe that with that particular timeline, the Old Republic is five thousand uh, BBY. Okay. That's when the Old Republic starts, at least under Legends by that, it was five thousand right. BBY to sixty seven BBY. That was the Old Republic mm-hmm. uh, in the pre you know, in the old Legends universe. Um, but uh, hey, you know they are going to bring it back. And they are going to call it KOTOR 3. Great. Bring in the other two games. You know, well, yeah. bring in the Revan novel. Because I used to love the Revan novel. Oh, yeah. Little... And, and, you know, there's nothing saying that they couldn't do that. There's nothing. I mean, it's far enough back. You go back three or 4,000 years. You're not. You're you're dealing with events that have nothing to do with anything that's already established. That's so, right. So there's no reason why. I mean, even if you went back 1,000 years to the Bane Trilogy, you could make the Bane Trilogy canon tomorrow. And it wouldn't change a thing. You know, um, I mean, you could bring it over as is, and it's the same thing with Kotor. So, if mm-hmm. they if they were to do an, a, a Kotor three proper, then yeah, I don't yeah. see any reason at all to bring over to not bring yeah. over the other mm-hmm. two, and and maybe even 
give it the extra effort, go the extra mile, and give us a remaster of those two. Well, yeah, I mean, the Reverend novel, which kind of takes place after the events of the first game, and right. then to the events of the second game, I mean, that's 3,954 years before Yavin. Right. So, you know, it's it's a heck of a long time before the High Republic. Yeah. So, yeah, as you said, you can bring it in, and it won't impact anything whatsoever. But I, I can't I can't see them bringing in Koto. I think Koto, as we know it, Knights of the Old Republic, I think is 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 long dead, and it's gonna be Knights of the High Republic. Fair enough. No, I'm I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question, Hector. Thanks for sending in, man. Do appreciate it. Uh, and our last question this week comes from the Bellhop Brass. Uh, I, but, uh, brother, you didn't put your name on your email, so. I had to go with your, uh, I guess, part of your... It's not his whole email, guys. Don't start thinking you can send him emails or I'm not going to put anybody's email out there. It's part of his email. Um, but uh, I wanted to be able to, to identify you. So uh, the Bellhop Brass says, Hello, Star Wars Canon Podcast. Today is my birthday, so I thought I'd try to get a question on your show this week. Happy belated birthday, brother. Uh, I've been seeing an article popping up saying that there are reports of Disney remaking the sequel trilogy into a series and rebooting them to erase the theatrical films. Is there any truth to these reports? And if so, are you a fan of the idea? And how much uh, uh, and how much different do you think this version will be? May the Force be with you all. Uh, Jay, would you want to take a first stab at this one? Yeah, okay. Um, first of all, Brass, I hope you've had a nice birthday. Um, right. Now, in terms of the sequel trilogy, which I've mentioned before, there are moments within each film that I thoroughly enjoyed. I absolutely despise the ending of The Rise of Skywalker. Retcons the entire Star Wars saga. Now Vader's no longer the chosen one who brings balance to the Force and destroys the Sith. Leaving the first 40 years of the movie's history null and void. That being said, it's a movie. I'm not going to let it get to me. I'm going to move on. Um, remakes of the trilogy... Nah, not going to happen. I mean, firstly, I don't want it to happen. I don't want them to remake those movies. That's Carrie Fisher's last performance. I don't want that to be retconned the same way as the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy has been retconned by the finale. What I want to see is Disney put out some good quality shows, which, to be fair, Disney, they've done. They've nailed it. John Favreau and Dave Filoni have nailed it. I want to continually see more of that so it connects the dots as to how Luke ended up the way he was, how the government ended up the way it was, where it became lax a days ago. If you read the novel Bloodlines, you know, nobody takes Leia seriously, especially when they find out who she, her father is. She's shipped off to one side. I want more content to fill in the gaps as to, okay, as to how it got to that place. Don't erase it. It is what it is, and for the younger generation, you know, it's going to be their Star Wars. So I don't want to. I don't want to. You know, a lot of people my age complained when George changed a lot from the original trilogy. Well, it'd be hypocritical for that generation, because I can only speak for my generation. It would be hypocritical then for that generation, myself included, to request Disney do the same to the younger generation. That I've had it done to me. Uh, I'm not particularly bothered with the the uh, changes that the original trilogy have gone through. Really makes no difference to me, apart from Han Solo, you know, shooting Greedo. Mm -hmm. But um, this is Carrie Fisher's last performance. I don't want that tampered with. It's the last time the three main guys and girl, uh, along with Peter Mayhew, will ever be together because he's no longer alive. It was his last film performance, Kenny Baker's last film performance, I don't want those tampered with, that is the younger generation of Star Wars, I just want some con some good quality content to come out, much like the Clone Wars did back in the prequel era, which for some people watching the Clone Wars helped them understand the, pre uh, the, the prequel trilogy and the, the dynamic shift in between Anakin's character from Attack of the Clones to Revenge of the Sith. Mm -hmm. So all I want is good content that can just bring us from Return of the Jedi to The Force Awakens. 
I I'm I'm with you, man. I I don't want them to look. His like I said earlier, I'm not a fan of those films. Uh, but I don't want to see this happen. Uh, because basically, uh, I I shared this story with all the the hosts of the podcast today in our in our private chat, and and basically I was like, I don't see this happening because this is basically a carbon copy of what is going on with the Snyder Cut with Justice League. It, it's basically it, it, it. Let's just say for sake of argument, this is happening. That's that's what it is. They're just Snyder cutting Star Wars. And what what people don't well, first off, I think this is complete BS. I think it's somebody who really hates the films. They're trying to stir up crap and and get everybody excited for something that's never going to happen. Um, because in order to do something like this, if they were going to make the changes that the, that this article is talking about, they're going to make. By the time you made all these changes in the first two films, Rise of Skywalker is going to be a completely different story. It's not even going to be remotely close to what we got in the theater. Um, Last Jedi is going to be a lot different than what it was. You know, Force Awakens would be the one that would probably be the closest to what it was in the theaters. And then after you got past that, it would just go haywire. Um, and and I don't, I don't, I honestly don't see this happening. I've got the original article pulled up here. Uh, it was inside the magic.net was reporting on this. Now, Nick said this is a credible site. I don't know much about it. Um, I don't know. I don't really know their track record. Um, but their article is saying Disney Plus to reportedly retcon Star Wars sequel trilogy. Uh, the Star Wars sequel trilogy is reportedly set to receive a Disney Plus reboot featuring unused footage of the original trilogy trio of Luke, uh, Princess General, Leia Organa, and Han Solo. Uh, it goes on to say, further report the reboot of the sequels, which received immense fan backlash, would be a three-season series rather than a movie trilogy and would feature archive footage of the late Fisher, Ford, and Harrison, oh, that's weird. I think that's supposed to say Hamill, uh, in the first season. Each season presumably would rework the events of one of the sequel trilogy movies, episodes 7, 8, and 9. This would mean that the first season would rework The Force Awakens, season 2, Last Jedi, and third, Rise of Skywalker. Uh, it says one of the most exciting aspects of this rumor is the idea that sequel director J.J. Abrams already filmed a scene with the beloved core trio from Star Wars Episode Four. Uh, that would be incorporated into the first season of the streaming Star Wars series. Uh, I don't know that he did, did he? Well, I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Um, you know, it could very well be that they're just doing a director's cut of the movie. Right. If there is footage that's been uh, filmed and never made it to the theatrical release, then there's nothing to say that they're not going to just go back and edit the theatrical release to include the, right. uh, the uh, unseen footage and just re-upload it as a director's cut. Um, I just can't see them retconning um, the the sequel trilogy. And yeah, think me of, neither. Think of what's going to happen. Let's just say that that does go down that road. The sequel trilogy gets retconned completely and recut into a series. Now, you're going to have to bring back all the actors, Daisy Ridley, yeah. you know, all the new guys, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, and say, okay, we're going to do these now as three series. Um, we don't have enough of your parts for the three series. You know, can we do some reshoot? Can you come back and film some scenes? I very much doubt they would come back. Yeah. Um, also then, you, how is that going to look? You know, you're going to get yeah. people that have been... Claiming this then as a victory, said, "Oh yeah, we won. Disney's going to wreck on the trilogy." Nah, I, I think if anything, it's just going to be, be maybe a director's cut, which I can't see happening myself. It's probably just somebody uh, maybe misheard something or misreported something. If there was crew or staff that mm -hmm. was looking through unused footage to see if it could be used in another TV series or another streaming show series. There's nothing wrong with them reusing that footage. They did that in Rogue One when they took yeah. unused footage from Episode Four and slapped Gold Leader and Red Leader smack in the middle of Scarif. Yeah, you know, there's nothing to say that 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 could very well be their plan. Maybe they're looking at unused footage and thinking, okay, can we get some scenes out of the original actors from the the new movies uh, and the the legacy actors, and can we work a story? Right, right. For example, Hosnian Prime, mm -hmm. um, Leia's assistant that she sent to Hosnian Prime, whose name escapes me, but it is 3.30 in the morning, guys. Give me some credit. <laughs> um, 
she goes to Hosnan and Prime. She was supposed to have a big story, and it was kept from the entire movie. Yeah. All we see is her as the planet gets destroyed. So it could very well be that she's, right, okay, bring her in for a series, give her a show, let's see more of her, let's play some footage from the movies, include some footage that was cut from the movies, so you can sort of see where it fits in with the movie, and then just follow her on her mission to Hosnian and Prime. Right. See more of that. It could just be nothing more than building on what we've seen to explore things that we don't know that were cut from the movie and expanding on them. I don't think they're going to wreck on the sequel trilogy. I think that'd just be a waste of money. Well, you got to remember this too. A lot of the footage that was cut from Force Awakens and even a lot of the deleted scenes from Last Jedi of Leia were used already in Rise of Skywalker. Um, mm. So, I mean, you, how much, even if they were just doing director's cuts of the three films, you can't have these scenes with Leia popping up in, in The Force Awakens talking about never underestimated droid, and then the same scene pops up in Rise of Skywalker where she's telling Rey the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and honestly, if they were going to do anything to any of these movies, like I told you guys in the, in the chat, my, I'm of the opinion that if they were going to go back and do kind of a, like like what you said, a director's cut where they're adding in scenes that they cut out that shouldn't have been cut out, like Luke's third lesson, right, in Last Jedi. Should have been in the film, but it wasn't. Uh, maybe have that scene added in, you know, and stuff that helps make <laughs> them, make the films more uh, conforming to other canon that we have, to the yeah. other novels and stuff. If they were able to go back and fix some things, mm. like, yeah. you know, little things like Zori Bliss's line talking about when you ran off and joined the Resistance, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Little things like, like if yeah. you go back to Force Awakens, right? Yeah. And so when they all land on Taco Down to Maz's castle, Han specifically tells Chewbacca, wait by the Falcon. Yeah. When everything kicks off and Han leaves the castle, when all the stormtroopers are firing, Chewbacca's right behind him. Yeah. Where did he come from? I, yeah, Where did, I, how I don't did know. did Chewbacca suddenly appear right behind him? Even Han's the novel soul? didn't address that. Well, in the novel, remember, he comes in. Uh, he rips he off Unkar Plot's arms. Follows Unkar Plot in yeah. the castle, the uh, castle, and rips his arm off. Yeah. Because remember, but that's been filmed. That deleted scene hasn't been finished, so right. the editing is kind of like sloppy. Right. But then it, it's still in, it was still in post production when it was dropped. But you know that footage is there. You could clean that up and have you know one episode of just you know bring Jonas back yeah Chewbacca here we go here's your costume stand by the Millennium Falcon the cardboard cut out in the background just walk towards that door come in and, and we'll play the clip from the movie we'll finish it off yeah you know maybe make it look a little bit more menacing and then have you then down there because there was some deleted scenes of um, you know Han Solo just shooting the breeze with the stormtrooper you know trying yeah. to, you know there's different uh, shots where the stormtroopers had apprehended them and Han Solo references the boots, mm -hmm. the boots that Finn is wearing. And Finn turns to him and says, oh, that's how you know. Remember when the film where Han says, you know, women will always find out the truth and he slams them, he, he pushes the weapon into yeah. Finn's chest and says, always. And Finn's just confused by it. But in that deleted scene that comes after, Han says, oh, is it about the boots? And he points to Finn. Mm -hmm. And Finn's like, the boots, that's how you know. So Han knows that Finn's a stormtrooper. And then they yeah. say, oh, Snope? Who's Snope? Who's Supreme Leader Snope? And they're all shouting back, oh, it's Snoke. And yep. he's like, okay, all right, everyone hand over your weapons, hand over your weapons. And the stormtrooper says to Han, he goes, you two on your blaster. Oh, you want this blaster? Oh, it's broken. Yeah. You know, all it, those little moments. And that was the just, same scene used. where Maz used the force also. That's it. Yeah. Scene, you know, St stuff you like that. Was, or, you know, changing... You know, and, and like I said, just little things like why did Luke have the blue lightsaber on crate? You know, when he force projected stuff like that, like, and I get, yeah. I get why he had the blue saber, but there's a lot of people that really wanted to see that green saber. And it, honestly, it makes more sense that he had the green saber, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, I, it I, really I, does. I get their explanation as to why he had the blue one, but the green one does make a lot more sense. But like well, little it, stuff yeah. like that. The blue one blew up in Kylo Ren's face. Yeah. Yeah, like and Kylo didn't miss that, you know. Like he saw that happen. Like it's just, I I get why they did the blue saber. It was so that the audience would go, but that saber's destroyed. How does he have it? This, you know, and it's kind of a hint, 
kind of like with him when he's scraping his foot across the salt and there's no red, you know, there were these little hints showing that Luke wasn't physically there. So that's why it was blue. But I get like just change little things like that, you know, um, and, and like I said, add more scenes in like Luke's third lesson. Um, there's 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 so much that you could throw in there that we yeah. that we now know happened in between, you know, even during the novel, the films from the novels and stuff that you could shoot and put in there. Um, but this article does go on to say um, Adam Driver, who played sequel trilogy antagonist Kylo Ren, has remained ambiguous about whether or not he would play his role in the Star Wars story again. Many main actors, uh, or I'm sorry, main character actors, Oscar Isaac, John Boyega, and Daisy Ridley have all expressed that they will not return to the Star Wars universe. Uh, so, I mean, how much could you change it, though, if you're not shooting new footage? You know, you're. it's going to have to be one of those things where you just have to use what you've already got, and how how much can you alter the story based off of what you already have? Yeah. You, you know I what think- I'm saying? Yeah, I think with Adam Driver, it's going to be different because he's the complex character yeah. in the sequel trilogy. Um, and as we were saying earlier, me personally, I'm a massive Luke fanboy. Um, I would love it if they just did even a one series run of Luke Skywalker. Now, I'm not particularly a big fan of a recast, although if a studio was going to do a whole episode of Luke Skywalker, Young Skywalker, mm-hmm. it'd be unrealistic for them to do it CG. It'll cost a fortune. Right. Um, bring in young Luke, okay, right after Mandalorian, season two. He touches down wherever his, wherever his temple is or whatever his praxium, his Jedi praxium is, wherever he's training Jedi, you know, you can then have him with Grogu for an episode or two. Fast forward then a couple of years, bring in Finn Wolfhart to play a young Kylo Ren mm-hmm. or young Ben Solo. We train with Ben Solo, bring in a load of other kids as well. And then by this point, then we can just use Mark Hamill. Say, so right, okay, Mark, grow your beard out. Yeah. We'll trim it down so it's nice, trimmed nice and neat. We'll put the dye back in your hair and your beard like they did at the end of The Last Jedi. And they can make it work. And then finish off then with the destruction of the temple. Yeah, no, you they um, they could totally make it work that way. You're right. Yeah, or even with this retcon, you know, even if it's just a case of okay, we're gonna have one series, and it's all gonna be different anthology episodes, because all these props have been made for the Mandalorian. Like you got the Mon Calamari masks, all right. these where they've been made, state of the art technology has been made for these uh, costumes, these animatronics, face masks. Once they use, they put in a sh- they put in a warehouse. We'll bring them out. Let's have one episode of Admiral Akbar on the um, on his capital ship before he dies. Mm-hmm. Focus on him. Yeah. So you know, okay, we know this is around the time period of the Last Jedi. You know, focus on him so he can have his day out. Yeah. And out he goes through the window. Yep. You know, um, what was it? The the Radis. The Radis was the name of the ship. Yeah. Uh, Simple little things like that. You know, it doesn't have to be an overarching connecting series. They could just do anthology episodes, just one thirty minutes or one yeah. forty. It'd be nice if they did one hour episodes. Oh my but, god! And fix the damn arcing blaster bolts. The, the 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 turbo lasers when they're shooting at the the resistance fleet in Last Jedi when they're trying to fly away. Damn it! Don't make them arch. Lasers don't arch. Gravity doesn't affect lasers, damn it. Like that that whole thing drives me crazy. Every time I watch Last Jedi, I can't yeah, stand the fact that they, they do like the cannonball th- I hate that. Uh, you know what it is though. Somebody picked up one of those crystal foxes from early earlier in the storyline. <laughs> yeah. And as they were flying up, they just kicked it out of the airlock and the blast <laughs> bolt hit the fox and just prism effect Bent and it. And was redirected somewhere else. Ah, oh, I just little stuff like that just drives me absolutely crazy. You know, bring the guy back. Oh, what was his name? Um, uh, what was the name of the first order? Uh, Captain Kennedy. Yes, yes. Thank you. Ooh, bring him watch. back and shoot some more damn footage with him. He would yeah, have made an amazing addition yeah. to carry all the way through into Rise of Skywalker. I do like Captain Kennedy. Yeah. I just wish they let the actor keep his Welsh accent. Yeah. Oh, is he Welsh? Yeah, he lives a couple of miles from me. The um, uh, Imperial officer, 
uh, in The Mandalorian who got shot by Bill Burr. Yeah. The guy, he also plays the um, the White Walker King from Game of Thrones. He's Welsh as well. Really? There's a load of Welsh actors in Star Wars. Uh, predominantly, you, they're so extras. What are you doing team. here, man? Go get a job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, if they come, if they if they start shooting again in Wales, I might say, hey, you know, throw me in some armor, you know. Hell I yeah. don't have to put any armor. I'll just be like the semi-naked fat guy in the back with a rank off. Like, hey, I, can, I can live vicariously through you. But um, yeah, they, they had a lot of uh, Welsh. But the, 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 one of the puppeteers of Jabba's tail, um, he used to work in a library not far from where I live. Uh, but when I found that out, he'd retired. Um, oh, of course. <laughs> it's just, of course, because they were all filmed over here originally. Right. Not, not exclusively, of course, because they were filmed all over the world. But Pinewood Studios in England. Um, in London, where they started filming, you know, they started contracting people in uh, from different places, and predominantly UK-based. Uh, those were the people in the background with the helmets on, the people that didn't have speaking roles. Right. But, uh, yeah, there are a couple of uh, Welsh speaking parts in Star Wars, but they've all adopted well uh, American accents. I mean, look at John Boyega. He's a he's a London boy. He's a London boy. Mm-hmm. He's you know even he had to adopt an American accent to play a stormtrooper. <laughs> That's true. Uh, well guys, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, Jay, is there anything else you wanted to add before we signed off for the week? No, I'm good. You good? Fair enough. We've been going for about an hour and a half, so that's not a bad return episode, right? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. You know, a little bit to talk about, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not a bad episode. We were shooting for an hour, but you know, it's always good to have a little bit of extra content. Hey guys, thanks for uh, joining us this week and hanging out with us, talking some Star Wars. We do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want to uh, follow the Star Wars Canon podcast a little closer than just here on YouTube or on whatever app you're listening to this podcast on, you can check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Star Wars Canon podcast. You can also join our Discord server, uh, the link of which is in the description of this podcast. The Facebook link will be there as well. Uh, if you guys want to get a question on the Star Wars Canon podcast, you can email it to us at Star Wars Canon podcast at gmail.com. Uh, or you can send it through the Anchor app. So keep an eye out, guys. Real quick, I was going to talk about this at the top of the show, and I forgot about it. Uh, the mobile app is uh, no longer. It has become one with the Force. It has joined the netherworld of the Force. It had a short life, but it had a good life. Um, the mobile app is now down. I, I don't want to call it dead because it's depressing to call it dead. It's down. Uh, it's mainly due to cost of keeping it going. It was it was just insane. Jay knows the numbers. It was just insane to keep it going. Um, so alternatively, we all had a meeting together and we've decided we are going to do a website instead. We're gonna we used to have like Jay talked about earlier. We used to have the website um, StarWarsCanonLibrary.com, but we're going to be buying a new domain name. We're going to be building a new website, uh, and it's going to work a lot like the mobile app on your mobile version. Uh, but it's going to be literally a tenth of the price for us anyway to keep it going. Um, but the the website, it's going to be uh, a one-stop shop for everything that is Star Wars canon podcast related and anything Star Wars related. So uh, mm. Jay, Jay even sat down and put together a Legends timeline uh, of all the novels, all the comics, everything. Uh, and yep. send it to me. So we're going to be putting that on the website as, as well. Our goal, yep. with, Our goal with the website is to make it uh, as user friendly as possible, not just to canon readers, but to legends readers as well. Um, I know there are fans out there that prefer canon. I know there's fans out there that prefer legends. And instead of just catering only to the canon fans with this website, we want to be able to cater to everybody. So we're yeah. gonna have we're gonna have a legend section on there as well. And you know, Jay and I talked um, about uh, some of the reasons. You know, if if there's somebody who reads a lot of canon that wants to know a little bit more about stuff that happened in legends, they have that entire timeline there they can go to. And, and where they can go to buy those books as well. So that if something happens to pop up from Legends in canon, they go, oh, I know where that's from. Or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? If Legends fans kind of want to start dipping their toes into some canon stuff, awesome. And if not, you guys have your respective parts of the website, you know, but you guys can also come together and, and, and talk about what you guys love uh, together. So we are working on the website. I don't know exactly when that's going to be going live. We're going to be really pouring some some effort and resources into it to try to get it out pretty quick. But like I said, the mobile version is going to act just like the mobile app, but with a little bit more functionality. I should say quite a bit more functionality than what, what the app actually had. Um, well, just as an example, one of the features I'm hoping to 
uh, implement into the website version of the mobile app is, you know, if you go through the timeline and you see a novel you want to read, you can click on it right there in the timeline. It takes you straight to the page with the info instead of having to back out and go to purchase Canon. You know, if you guys had the mobile app, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, we didn't have that option with, with the app. So uh, we're going to try to make the mobile website work the same way. So keep an eye out for that. I'll keep you guys updated on everything that's going with that as we go along. Um, and I, I, I know everybody involved with the podcast uh, is, is ready to, to throw in and, and help get this thing out and, and to make it something awesome. So uh, keep an eye out for that. I do apologize for the mobile app coming down. I'm disappointed about it too. I'm kind of bummed, honestly. Um, but I think hindsight's 2020. And, and so far since I talked to Jay... I talked to Usif last night. We had a big uh, uh, group meeting last weekend. Uh, I think the general consensus is that a website is the way to go. So uh, we're we're gonna make something really special for you guys, and and just just bear with us. We'll get it out there. So uh, that's all we've got for this week. Like I said, thanks for joining us. And uh, as always, this is Brian and Jay signing off. And may the force be with you guys.